So I want to talk about the limitations of our new theory again to basically emphasize in some part of it. As we know, our new theory is known to be the most limited of the three theories since it requires the solution to be aqueous. It only applies to substances that produce hydrogen ions or hydroxide ions in water. Number one, an acid is expected to be an acid in any solvent, but that doesn't but that's not the case nowadays. For example, HCl acts as an arrhenius acid when dissolved in water. However, when HCl is dissolved in benzene, there is no dissociation. This is against Arrhenius theory. Arrhenius states that dissociation occurs in any aqueous solution. The properties of acid and bases play a critical role. Number two, Arrhenius didn't explain in his theory the behavior of acids and bases in a non-aqueous solution, for example, the dissociation of acetic acid in methanol. It could be written as acetic acid plus methanol. It's going to give you these two compounds. Number three, in Arrhenius theory, all salts should produce solutions that are neither acidic nor basic. But there are some exceptions against this theory. For example, if equal amounts of HCl and ammonia react, the solution is slightly acidic. If equal amounts of acidic acid and sodium hydroxide react, the resulting solution is basic. Arrhenius theory doesn't include any explanation for this. Number four, the need for hydroxide as the base led Arrhenius to propose the formula NH4OH as the formula for ammonia in water. This led to the misunderstanding that ammonium hydroxide is the actual base, but the actual base is ammonia. And number five, as you read before a bare proton cannot exist for a long time, in a water solution, therefore the reaction of water and proton is going to give you hydronium ion.